Hello. In this video I show you how to build a Z80 computer with only three chips. The Z80 GPU itself, a 128KB static RAM and a serial interface chip. The 74LS00 quad NAND gate is for testing purposes only. It is not used right now. So you can omit it. There is also a 4 MHz oscillator module for the system clock. The reset button in combination with a resistor and a capacitor for debouncing it, a lithium cell as buffer battery for the RAM and pin headers. It was very fiddly to solder all of these components together on a surfboard. It also does not look very beautiful though, but luckily it works. There are many videos about home built Z80 computers out there but most of them also use modern microcontrollers along with the Z80. My computer only uses components which were already common back in the 80s. In an earlier video I demonstrated how to interface a single Z80 CPU to an Arduino Mega. There the Arduino simulated memory and an I.O. device and so formed a crude computer that ran a small Hello World program written in machine language. But it turned out that the maximum clock frequency of this configuration was only around 150 kHz because the Arduino responded too slow to the memory and I.O. requests. The other point was that the Arduino has in total only around 12 KB of memory which can be used by the Z80. This is not so much. So I replaced the Arduino by a RAM and a serial interface chip. I still use the Arduino as a programmer, but it has no function anymore once the program is loaded into the RAM chip. I explain more in detail now how these components interact with each other. The 628128 is a 128K x 8 static RAM. This means that it has in total 1 megabit of memory organized in 128 kilobytes where each byte has 8 bit. So it has 17 address pins, but as the Z80 has only 16 address lines, the 17th line, A16, is tied to ground. So we use only 64 kilobyte out of the total 128. Let us see what the future brings. Maybe there will be any use for these yet unused 64 kilobytes in a later video. There are two main types of RAM, static and dynamic RAMs. In static RAMs or SRAMs, the bits are held in D flip-flops. Once set, these retain their state until power off. In dynamic RAMs or DRAMs, data is being stored in tiny capacitors. Due to their self-discharge, they must be periodically recharged. I use SRAM here because it needs only a fraction of a microampere to retain the data after the computer is powered off. So the RAM chip still remains powered by a small lithium cell and I can permanently store my programs without any EEPROM or flash memory and without additional address decoder logic. This significantly eases the design. Furthermore, I don't have to tinker with memory refresh stuff. The SRAM chips of the 628 family are very easy to use with the Z80. Connect the address and data lines one by one, also some of the control lines and you're ready to go. With this minimal two chip setup, we already have a computer. No. Yes. Oh. With a program and some data in the memory, it can do any kind of computation. But there is no way to at least see the results. So it comes to the third chip, the DART. DART stands for Dual Asynchronous Receiver and Transmitter. As the name says, it has two asynchronous serial interfaces which can be used to send serial data to peripheral devices like keyboards, printers or data terminals as they were widely used in the 1970s and 80s. I don't have a data terminal so I use PuTTY as a data terminal emulation on my PC. Now let's see how this works. The DART has been tailored for use with the Z80 CPU. You only join the data and control lines like shown in the pinout 
also receive and transmit clock and you are ready to use the two serial I.O. channels. My computer only uses the RX and TX pins of channel A yet. The handshake and modem control lines I just leave open. I plug a USB serial converter into the pin header aside the chip and yet I'm ready to control my computer by means of a terminal emulation program. And by the way, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are interested in what I will do in future, subscribe to my channel and activate notifications in order to never miss anything. Now let us see how to assemble the programs and load them into RAM. As an IDE, I use Visual Studio Code with Engine Designs Retro Assembler extension. This offers syntax highlighting for several retro CPUs from Motorola, Intel, and of course the Z80. I also downloaded the zip archive with the retro assembler itself from their website, extracted and copied the exe file into my Windows user directory or anywhere else on my workstation. In the extension settings, I enter the path to this executable and the command line arguments like this. Now I am ready to write my first assembly program for this computer. As a first step, I must initialize the DART. The DART has 9 registers, 6 write registers and 3 read registers. We must write the configuration settings of each channel like boot rate, parity, interrupt vectors and so on into the write registers and we can read error and status flags from the read registers. In order to access a particular register, I write the number of the register I want to address into the least significant three bits of the write register zero and then the next I.O. read and write cycle is performed on the selected register. Ok, let us see how to program this in assembler. To show it clearly, I organized the configuration values in a table somewhere in memory. The first column is the number of the write register, the second is the register value itself as binary value which exactly shows the bits that I want to set in the respective register. So the first line resets the dart, the next line sets the clock divider, the parity and stop bit in the write register 4, write register 3 and 5 set 8 bits per frame and enable the receiver and transmitter itself. And here is how to set the baud rate. The baud rate is the clock frequency divided by 64, 32, 16 or 1. This is set in write register 4. To make things as simple as possible, I joined the system clock of 4 MHz to the receiver and transmitter clock pins, set bit 7 in write register 4 to divide it by 32 and so get a baud rate of 125,000 bits per second. That's an unusual value indeed, but it works perfectly anyway. And I don't need any additional components to generate the transmit clock signal. At last, I set the wait ready enable bit in write register 1. When this is set, the wait line of the Z80 is set active during transmit. That makes the program wait until the transmission is over. To write these settings into the DART, I configure the HL register with the start address of the configuration table, the B register with its size and the C register with the IO address of the configuration registers. I join the config enable pin directly to address line A1 of the Z80, so the IO address is 2. Finally, I dump out the configuration to the DART with the OTIR command and already the DART is configured and ready to use. To output a string, I again use the OTIR command, load the HL register pair with the start address of the text, B with its length and C with the IO address of the transmit register before calling OTIR. The halt command at the end of the program keeps the Z80 program counter from running over the configuration table and the message. The Z80 would misinterpret them as opcodes and do weird stuff, so it just holds on until a restart or an interrupt occurs.
to load and start the assembly program on my Z80 computer, I put an Arduino Mega onto the pin headers of my board and upload the Z80 loader sketch. Then I enter these two lines on top of the assembly program. This causes the retro assembler to start a batch file that sends the output file over serial to the Arduino when I press F6. The Arduino then writes it to the static RAM chip and starts the program. After this, I start PuTTY or any other terminal program with the COM port number of my USB serial converter and type in 125,000 as board rate. Now I take off the Arduino and can restart the program by pressing the reset button. Every time I do that, it writes hello world from Z80 to the terminal. Now I show you how to read keyboard entries from the DART. For this, I simply pull bit 0 in read register 0 that indicates that a new character has arrived in the receive buffer. When this is the case, the program leaves the polling loop, reads the character and immediately sends it back to the terminal. So I can see what I actually type. With this, I wrote an assembler program that asks for my name and greets me personally. I will extend and improve this computer in my next videos, so don't forget to subscribe. That's all for now. Stay healthy and see you next time.